opportunities are dressed like overalls and look like work to many people. Welcome to the premiere of the startup where we inspire businesses. He started his journey with one step. He saw an opportunity in his environment. He started his business while he was young. This is the story of one James Waweru Wakenywa of Ukweli Products. Hello, I am James Waweru Wakenywa. This is my startup. It is called Ukweli Products. I am the leader here. And this is where we operate from. We operate from home, making and branding gift bags. At Ukweli Products, we major in making and branding gift bags, as you can see. Uh, these gift bags are made from eco-friendly material, eco-friendly papers, and these bags do serve as advertising agents for our customers and our clientele. My startup is called Ukweli Products. I, I, I named it after myself. In, in my former life, I'm a, I, was, I was a rapper. I used to do music. And my stage name was Ukweli, Mfalme Ukweli. And so I thought, why, why not transport myself? Why not bring myself to my, my business? And as a result, I call my business Ukweli. Ukweli is a Swahili word for, for honest, for being truthful or for true. Uh, my business, uh, to, be, to be truthful and to be honest, I, I, I only had the idea before I got uh, to get uh, the, the, the money to start the business. But uh, it, uh, it, it took me around 12,000 to start the business initially. Uh, I, I, was, I was poached, I might look for an organization that was funding a, a program for youths and uh, artisans in the, in, the, in the neighborhood. And they took me and uh, trained me on how to do business. And after that, they, they gave me some capital to train my fellow youths on how to run this business. And as a result, they gave me some seed capital. And with that capital, I was able to buy materials and start my business. First of all, I'm a, I'm a person who likes uh, to work with my hands. I enjoy working with my hands. And I, 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 I saw some young, young guys like me one time when I was doing a vending, a sausage vending business. I saw them carrying these bags and I... I was so inquisitive and I was so curious of, of what they were carrying and how they used to make these bags. And as a result, they got uh, to introduce me to this business. And it, it, I was excited, I, I was excited and it, I decided for myself that I want to learn to do this thing and I want to do this business. But first I wanted to learn how it is done and then later on I could do it as a business. So I never went to school. I was, I can say I was self-taught, but I was taught. And as a result, I was able to, to do this business on my own and that's how I started my business. Uh, on a normal basis, as you can see, we are, we are, we are four, five members are included. Uh, so on a normal basis, when the, the job is not as much, we usually do it five, 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 five guys and a lady included. Mm -hmm. uh, these five wonderful young men as I am, or these four, I am one of them of the five. First of all, they are consistent, they are hardworking, and they, they, they've done this business before at some other place. And so I sought for them since they, they are fast, they are reliable, they are hardworking. And there are people I can trust. I can I can leave them to work on a, on, a, on a particular order and not have any fears that it will not run as smooth and as efficient as well while, while I am there. So these are, are the people I trust. My media clients are people who, who make clothes. For they, they pack their, their, their clothes in this bag and they also get to advertise their companies through these bags. So this is a platform for advertising uh, personal uh, brands and also corporate brands. So for, for us to come up with the final product for the client, um, for the prospects, we first of all have to approach the prospect either by mail, by direct contact, 
or by by phone and we we have to get their logos their particular <laughs> details they what that they want on the bag from there on we design a plate a plate that we can use to print and we also get from them the particular sizes of the bags and whatever details they would like on the bags from there on we, we come to our workshop design the, the logos design the plates and when we design them we expose them and make a, a plate a, called a screen that's used to print on the on the bags from there we make the bags we take one or three samples to our prospect our clients and from there we can get feedback from them have we made the right thing is it the right size do we have the right contacts the light, the, the right colors from there they can decide to give us a huge order or to start to start with they can give us some some few bags to do and then from there they can decide to also introduce us to their fellow friends or other businesses and we get to serve them as well You have to be a hard working person as a business person. You also have to be consistent. You also have to be a, tr a trustable person if I can use the term. You have to be trusted by by your team and also by your clients. And also in business I've learned that you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in what you're doing and you also have to believe in your team. So those are my, my major 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 lessons in this business and also in life. First of all, I, 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 I can say I run this business on my own. It has not been easy to do business on your own, especially when you are training yourself and you have no mentor. So challenge number one is that I do, I do lack mentorship sometimes. I do lack someone who I can look up to. And as a result, I've, I've, I've sought uh, from, the, from reading and also from searching from the internet on how I can do my business better and also how I can better myself as a person. So that's my major challenge. Besides another challenge is, is capital. Sometimes I need, I need some huge amounts of money to service my, my orders and my clients. And so when I do not have enough capital, it's, it's a bit of a challenge here and there, but I, I do manage to get through that challenge of capital. I do manage to convince my clients or my prospect to give me some, some down payment so that I can be able to buy materials and also produce their, their bags for them. I know you've seen some other businesses, some other products like this, and you ask what's the difference between us and them. First of all, Lukweli Products is a business. It's not a CBO, it's not an NGO, it's not a self-help group. This is a business. We run it as a business, and that, that separates us from the rest. Another thing that sets us apart from the rest is, first of all, we are passionate in what we do. We are creative. We tailor make our products according to our client specifications and as a result that sets us apart from the rest of the group. This is how we market ourselves. Since we've acquired a clientele base, it's not so hard for us to go and approach customers with whatever it is we've already made. So they get to see for themselves what we've made and how we've made it. And as a result, we, we, we do not find it hard to convince them to give us orders. That's number one. Number two, we've already established a good clientele base and those clientele do the marketing on our behalf. So it's easy for us to get more orders as a result of that. So our my success story, um, our success story as Ukweli products, in our in a few years in operation, we've managed to 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 work with different pro clients and different organizations. But that's not our major major success story. Our major success story is we've gotten feedback from our clients. They are happy with what you do. They are satisfied with what you do. And as a result, they give us more referrals and more business from their friends. That's, that's one of our major success stories. I, when, I, when I decided uh, from my side of view, from my life, that I want to do this business, my family and friends were so supportive. I remember when I was starting, I had no space, not even the space you see right now. And I had some few friends here and there who told me that they can support me in whatever means I have. And my parents and my family also 
decided to give me space from their house where to work from. So in my business, I've gotten support, so immense support from my friends and my family. And without them, I could not be where I am. So friends and family are core, core, core principle in any business and in anything you are doing. <laughs> My motivation and my major inspiration in this business is that, that motivation that I'm doing my own thing, I'm doing my own business, I'm managing my own time, I'm managing my own resources. That in itself gets me waking up early in the morning and gets me out there in the field to go and get more orders. So those are my major motivation. Besides working with my fellow youths and creating some income for them and as I create some income for myself. So those are my major inspirations. My personal advice as a, as, a, as, a, as a business person and also as a startup is to work on your idea. Whatever it is you want to do, do not hesitate, do not wait for huge capital or in essence do not wait for capital. Whatever it is you want to do, start on it. Wherever you are with whatever little or meager resources you have, start on what you want to do and as you, as you go along, the capital and also the other resources that you need will get to you. And that's my startup. If opportunities do not knock, build a door. Follow your dreams and passion. Those are the key texts that we take from the story of James Waweru Wakenya of Ukweli Products. After the break, we are cracking a startup. Then later on, Patrick Wameo will give us hints on how we can finance our startup. The cake industry is one of the fastest instant paying business. Every day, people celebrate special occasions and cakes are consumed. In the startup, we are cracking this business with the help of industry experts. The startup cost is 9,000 shillings to 15,000 Kenyan shillings. Yearly, potential earnings are from 450,000 to 3 million Kenyan shillings. Typical fees is 2,500 per cake to 250,000 Kenyan shillings. What is needed? Cake baking and decorating knowledge, knowledge of health regulations, food preparation permits, business operation permits, equipments like oven, baking pans, ingredients and decorating supplies, hidden cost, vehicle for delivery. So what are the keys to success in this business? 1. Produce unique designs. 2. Define your niche. 3. Make contract with area planners and caterers. And four, know your market territory well. And remember, there are cakes, then there are special cakes. For any startup, um, uh, these are the areas, uh, rather the different options that, uh, that they could use to finance uh, their ideas. The, the very first obvious uh, place is to start with your savings, and, and that, that, that assumes that uh, the person who is uh, setting up a business has has been probably in some form of other income, and therefore has some savings. It doesn't apply for younger people. Who might have uh, no 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 savings to put pull upon, but savings is one of the best source of capital for a new business because your savings don't have an extra cost other than the opportunity cost. Um, uh, the, the the next uh, in the same order of you know low risk kind of funding 
would be to fall back on parents, fall back on friends for what you call family or friends loan. Again, this is the kind of loan that will be given to you, more on a friendly basis, uh, people who understand you, people who believe in you, and, and therefore will not be asking for uh, a lot of return on, on, their, on their money in the early ages of the business. Most of the time, family and friends will give you that money for free. In other words, they will give you capital which you use, put up the business, and then pay them back. Some may give it back in return for ownership in the business which by every means is, is, is quite good because then the money stays with you long enough to, to support the growth of the business over time. The other source of course is to now turn, turn outside, out, go outside the family and outside your own domain. And, and here there's, there are people we call angel financing or, or angel financiers. And angels are, are not from heaven. They are, they are men and women are usually uh, successful business people uh, who are willing or uh, consider opportunities in specific areas and they would put money in, in, in an idea once they are convinced that the person who is setting up uh, the idea, one has a good understanding of the concept, has tried it, probably even tested it in a wider market and the potential is, 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 is confirmed and the capacity uh, to run and develop the business beyond just the, the lack of funding actually exists. So you, you will notice that there's, an, there's the extra condition of capacity to build the business being a major consideration as opposed to family and friends who might not, uh, I mean, do a lot of scrutiny on your ability to run, to, to, to actually set up and run a business. Uh, when you're done with the angels or you don't have a chance at getting one, then you now must begin to consider more of the institutions that offer kind of fast funding we call venture capital. Uh, venture capital funds, uh, for example, in Kenya Fusion Capital and, and a few others that are available, and there are a number of them, would come with both the money and management. They don't just bring the money. Um, the, the, the idea is that uh, some and most startups do not have managerial capacity. They may have very high enthusiasm, probably have good capacity to lead an idea, a good understanding of a market um, to some extent, but they may need additional uh, human resources in terms of skills, in terms of experience, in terms of influence to actually anchor and develop an idea well. So angels, I mean um, venture capitals bring in not just the money, they may assign to you one of their managers or the, the, a senior member of that, of that team, maybe a board member, so that they participate in the decisions, day-to-day -day decisions of the business. And then they'll help you run a business up to a point when the business can now produce its own cash flows, such that even if they, they remove their capital, although gradually, the business doesn't go with it. So they may remove the money gradually, or they may remove the money usually, uh, gradually or at once, but by the time they are removing the money, the business is in a position to keep on regenerating its own capital and expanding adequately. Of course, outside that, uh, the only other way is lenders, the normal lenders, but lenders are not venture capitalists, so when they give you money, they'll give you very short-term finance, mainly microfinance kind of um, financing, so we'll give you money. The commercial banks don't finance um, startups. Commercial banks finance businesses that are looking for working capital funding and maybe uh, funding for for, 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 for replacement or expansions of the fixed capacity, the fixed assets. So you don't quite find banks, as you call them, or the commercial banks, as you call them, offering funding for pure startups. But they may give you some working capital when you have shown some balance sheet. The book that I would recommend any startup look at is A Lean Startup by Eric Rice. It would help them develop some really good insights. Thanks for watching this startup where we inspire businesses. Like us on social media, but remember, if you cease to dream, you cease to live. Until next time, God bless.